Welcome to Express Price. Today we have with us Tom von Borstoff. He is the Managing Director of Volvo Auto India. And recently Volvo has been in the news for a lot of positive things. And today we are here with him to discuss what's the future roadmap for the company. So Tom, thank you for giving us time today. Thank you. Welcome, Arpit, and uh, thanks for uh, joining us today. Thank you so much. And uh, well, there's been a lot of action happening on the front for Volvo recently in India. And there was this big announcement of Volvo coming up with a new plan finally after mm -hmm. all these years. So what we would like to understand first is when was this firmed up? I mean, when was this plan really firmed up and what was the idea behind setting up uh, the plant here? Well, first of all, it's like you said, it's been up for a long time and finally we have been able to announce that we are, are actually setting up a plant and, and uh, which is a really a happy moment for, for us because uh, I think that for, let's say, the last decade probably, we've known that competition has been setting up uh, um, plants in, in India. And of course, we follow competition, see what, what, uh, what's happening in the automotive world and, and uh, look at different business cases, how we should operate in India. I think that uh, we've been here since 2007 uh, with maybe the, the bigger volume growth now in just the last few years. Right. So um, I think we've looked at, at uh, setting up plants and, 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 and looking at scenarios for, for already for some years and for different reasons we haven't done it yet but now felt like a, a good time to, to do it and I think the main reasons are that the Indian economy is, looks very stable now. There's a good seven plus percent in GDP growth year over year for, for quite some years. Right. Uh, also uh, we believe that the, the same government is going to be probably in power for you know, even next even term. even next term, uh, which means that probably the policies and uh, and the decision making will be on a fairly stable level, right. uh, and and maybe even more importantly is that we see that our sales have been developing very well now in the last few years. We've had double digit growth now for a few years in a row, um, and and we really see that our products are now speaking to the customers. Uh, we have an expanding network, and and we see that you know now is a good time to invest in the market and really take that final step to to uh, for further growth. Based on what we know about the mm. plant right now, Volvo XC90 is going to be the first car that will roll out of mm. the plant. Uh, by when is that expected? So we basically said that by the end of the, this year we would be ready to to roll out the first car. And uh, that means in the, in the last quarter of this year, we should see the first uh, cars coming out. So later, later this year. Is there a particular investment capacity uh, number that you have, uh, the investment number mm -hmm. for the plant? Well, we haven't announced any specific uh, number how much cars we actually can produce. But what I've said is that uh, we aim for uh, doubling our segment shares in India by 2020. Okay. So we would uh, roughly have a 10% segment share in, in 2020, okay. which depending on what the car market is going to be at that point in time will be a, a number of thousand cars. And, and what we have sort of uh, have as a, as a capacity uh, plan is that we will meet, be able to meet that doubling of the, of the segment share uh, with this, this investment into this plant. Okay, tell us what's uh, the kind of sales that Volvo Auto India mm. is putting out right now and what's the market share for you right now in India? Yeah, so in uh, 2016 we did uh, 1600 cars, uh, which was a growth of about 11% uh, uh, compared to last year. Would have been a bit more, but demonetization at the end of the year made it a bit more challenging to, to meet uh, the, the growth that we had in the, in the earlier part of the year. Uh, this year we aim to do about a 25% growth, which means uh, we will pass the 2,000 car uh, mark during this year. And of course, uh, uh, in the next coming years, we really rapidly want to grow that even further so that uh, in 2020 it will be uh, uh, a sizable share of, of the segment. Now I understand you mm. said uh, the 10% market share depending on what the volumes are in the mm. market at that point of time. But from 2,000 plus cars right now, mm. is there a number you're looking at uh, by 2020? approximately how many units uh, per year? The reason why I want to speak about the segment share is obviously because I, I, I don't know the, what the number is going right. to be in 2020. But, but because all the estimates in the recent years have proven to be wrong, so it's, uh, it's a bit easier for me to talk about a segment share. But of course we need some, some plans to, to work on. So right now the premium segment, uh, or the luxury segment is about 35,000 cars. Uh, if we est estimate that it will grow, say, to about 40,000 cars this year, then I think it could be 
could be, uh, uh, let's say, a fairly okay estimate to say that we would have uh, about 50,000 cars, the segment size in 2020. Right. Uh, and if you take a 10% share of that segment, it would mean that we would sell about 5,000 cars. Right. That's, of course, playing with the numbers. We don't know exactly what it's going to be, but, but sort of for capacity planning, uh, that would be a number that we could uh, use for, for our planning. Uh, well, we know the XC90 is the first model, but uh, beyond that, what are the other models that we can see rolling out of the mm. plant in India? Well, so far we've only decided on the XC90, so uh, my answer is going to be a bit boring, and I'll say that uh, we'll, we're planning for what's, what's to come after that, and, and right now we're only announcing that the XC90 is going to be built there. Uh, recently you also introduced uh, the Polestar uh, brand in India. And Polestar is a brand known for performance, and mm. that for the first time Volvo uh, comes at par in terms of in the performance game with your German competitors. Mm. So, uh, what's your expectation from the Polestar brand mm. uh, for the Indian market specifically, mm. and uh, what kind of role do you want it to play? Mm. Well, uh, when I look at our portfolio, uh, we're very known for our SUVs. Uh, we have a, a new luxury sedan. We have a hatchback. Uh, what we have been missing so far uh, in in the Indian market is a is a is the niche segment of of luxury performance cars. Right. So we basically f first of all wanted to have a chance for people who want to buy a Volvo and people who want to buy a performance car to be able to finally do that and, and buy an S60 Polestar. So of course we wanted to to have our uh, segment uh, complete in 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 all the uh, segments where we operate. And uh, uh, I think that. Um, there's a big demand and a, and, a, and a desire for performance also in India, like elsewhere in the world. Uh, and I think the S60 Polestar is really a, a, a good package for, for customers in India, where you have a, a car that goes uh, you know, from 0 to, to, to 100 kilometers per hour in 4.7 seconds and, and, uh, and really has a, has a high performance uh, capability. At the same time, as I also think it's a, it's a car that you can use both on track and off track. And, and, uh, and that's why I felt that we, we have had a big demand from our dealers saying that, uh, uh, you know, there's a big demand uh, from customers that, that we want Polestar cars into, into India. And, of course, we want to fulfill the dealers' wishes as well and, and decided to, to bring that in. And now, of course, we're just in the early phases. But uh, we've had a good, good uh, bus around the product so far and I hope it will be, be successful as well. Is there a number in terms of how many bookings you've got mm. for uh, the car up to now? Or how many you've already sold? Yeah, I don't have an exact booking number, but but uh, we only got 30 cars to to India. Uh, we have a fairly aggressive price on the car, yes. uh, which I think will prove that. Uh, um, but we have to start negotiating with the plant about trying to get some additional capacity to to India because uh, right now it's been a very successful car uh, around the world, and uh, probably the next step is start negotiating how to get more of those cars to to India. So it looks very promising for the time being. You were one of the first manufacturers to get um, a plug-in hybrid um, mm. into the country, and so what's your take on the government's policy regarding mm. uh, hybrid and electric vehicles? Mm. Well. Um, First of all, I think that the, the main policy that the government has, which is to introduce the BS6 uh, uh, by 2020, that's, that's I think, a, a really good policy because we really need to have uh, a solid policy that, that the cars that are driving on the roads of India are, are compliant when it comes to, to pollution. I think BS6 is, is really good to, to make sure that um, you know, any, any car being sold fulfill these, these basic demands. So that's maybe one, one, one important thing. Then uh, I really would hope uh, for strong incentives on, on electrical cars and on hybrid cars. Uh, there still will be a number of years before, before we go fully electrical on, or for, for many of the local and many of the international brands. And, and I would really hope to see that, uh, um, that we have, have strong incentives uh, in taxation, GST, road tax, um, uh, registration tax, uh, maybe fuels uh, uh, on, on um, also for hybrid cars and for electrical cars. Uh, maybe the latest news at least show that on electrical cars there will be good, good, uh, good support. So, but I think to be able to find the pollution or to fight the pollution uh, situation in Delhi, we really have to work hard on that. And, and um, the reason why some of the European countries have a very high penetration of hybrid cars, for instance, 
Uh, it's not because they are more environmentally conscious than, than the Indian people. It is simply because they get, get more incentives in, in different ways. Could be, could be road tolls or free parking or registration tax or road tax or, or, or straight support on the car itself. But it needs to be there to drive consumer behavior, to prioritize electrical cars and, and hybrid cars. So we really need that, uh, that support from the government. There was a recent uh, global announcement from mm. uh, Volvo wherein they said uh, that this diesel, they'll not be, Volvo will not be developing any more new diesel engines beyond 2020. Mm. So they're going to do with the engine you have in the various versions, which means electric mm. is the future for Volvo. Yeah, I think the, the statement from our CEO was maybe slightly uh, uh, abused and maybe made a bit more aggressive than, than intended to, but but uh, I, I think the, it doesn't mean that we are stop stopping stop, we stop selling uh, diesel cars, but more that we see that the, the future is is more towards electrification, and and what we have in the pipeline now is we have right now we have the XC90 T8 plug-in hybrid on sale in, in India as the first SUV actually which was was launched here, and uh, what what I want to do is to bring in. Uh, electrification all our car lines which we will have on 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 our coming car lines we will all of them will have electrification so plug-in hybrids and and I want to bring all of those to India as, as quickly as possible but of course provides that there is a system uh, incentive uh, uh, set up that makes it possible for consumers to be able to to buy them and in in 2019 we will launch our first fully electrical car and of course, we want to have that uh, in India as soon as possible as well. So as, as a company, we have a vision that by 2025, we want to have sold uh, 1 million electrified Volvos worldwide. And I really hope that as, as many of those 1 million cars would have been uh, sold and delivered to, to Indian consumers. There's a lot of uh, action happening on, uh, from Volvo in the world of autonomous uh, driving. And again, there's also this mm. commitment from Volvo of mm. uh, no deaths in their cars. Mm. So, uh, from an Indian perspective, uh, how do you see this turning out? Because autonomous uh, te driving technology has a lot of challenges in mm. India. I mean, there are too many variables that the computer needs to figure it mm. out. So, uh, that commitment, do you think it will uh, stand at the same time in India as well, uh, mm. when it's rolled out globally? So, that's really a good question. People usually uh, smile at me when we talk about aut autonomous driving and they've asked me, have I been on a Monday morning in uh, in, in Delhi driving uh, and I, do I think that you can use autonomous driving uh, in, in, in that particular area for instance and, and of course I see challenges in, in, uh, in, in some areas uh, for instance you know road marking is an important part of, of how, how our systems work if the road marking isn't there then there's, a, um, there's some, some uh, parameters that are not maybe functioning in the perfect way but, but to me it's actually I think autonomous driving is, is very important for India and, and maybe not only because of the autonomous driving itself but, but uh, if I take an example that one of the main things in autonomous driving is the, the, uh, um, uh, um, the uh, um, auto braking function yes. uh, which means basically that if, if, if I follow a car in front of me and, uh, and that car brakes uh, then my car brakes automatically as well and I, I, we've seen some horrible examples, let's say, on Agra Expressway when there's in the middle of the night there's a car or a truck being parked in the middle of the road and there's another car which is smashes into this car which, which can have fatal, fatal consequences. This technology uh, which we have which is sort of making it possible to have autonomous driving are safety features which we really badly need in, in India very much and, and uh, so in my opinion Autonomous driving is, is definitely something we want to push in India uh, and not the least for the safety feature. So we really want to push that. And, and uh, the company has a vision that uh, by 2020, nobody should get uh, killed or seriously injured in a new Volvo car. And, uh, and I think that's probably one of the reasons why we, as the first car company in India, um, started to sell cars with uh, radar-based safety features, which enable these automatic braking uh, functions, for instance. You're talking about safety mm. and uh, the automatic braking functions. Now, so do you think for India, it's not automated driving completely, but uh, pockets of these technologies mm. that are the future for maybe the next decade, like automated braking and then maybe some other, like um, an adaptive cruise control. So mm. maybe not fully autonomous driving, but parts mm. of uh, that technology coming in, uh, is that the way ahead for India? 
Yeah, I, I mean, uh, like you said, I mean, we already brought in some cars with uh, um, uh, with, with auto braking and and uh, um, and and, uh, uh, and the cruise control function, for instance. So, so I think that those are steps on the way. But I really also want to really. I don't think we should neglect India when it comes to autonomous driving. We have some good ro good roads where you can actually use it very well. So we definitely want to push that that here as well. But as everywhere, as as any technology in infrastructure, as any technology in car car um, in cars, you have to take uh, every step at the time. So uh, that was an interesting conversation with Tom. And uh, if you want to read this completely in detail, you can do that on our website as well. Thank you.